Hello Startup Vision, my name is Frank Marchis. I'm a researcher at the SETI Institute and I'm also the co-founder and chief scientific officer at Unistellar. Hello Frank, you could be the hero of a science fiction movie. You're discovering exoplanets and moons around asteroids. You're working on alien life, but when you are on planet Earth, you're also an entrepreneur and you said also the chief scientific officer of a startup that does uh, telescopes. We see one in the background behind you. But not only telescopes, there's something more behind that. Can you tell us what is Unistellar and the vision behind it? Yeah, of course. So Unistellar is a company uh, from France uh, with offices in San Francisco. The goal of the company is to democratize astronomy, to bring the, the fun and the adventure of astronomy to everybody. So people will basically be able to participate to scientific investigation, discover or rediscover again stars and galaxies in the, in the sky using our telescopes. So behind it, you have the first telescope called the NNS Vision Telescope, the ED scope, which is a digital robotic smart telescope. So what, what, what is it? So it's a telescope which is equipped with a camera, a sensor, it's a telescope which is easy to use, a telescope that if you buy it and you don't know anything about astronomy, you can control using your, your cell phone. And we basically be able to see, like if you had a one meter class telescope in the garden. So you see galaxies and you find them in the sky. And you also receive notification from professional astronomers around the world when something is happening in your sky like a new comet has been discovered, you will know it. You will get a notification telling you, there is a new comet, uh, you should observe it tonight. You take your telescope, you put it in your garden and your backyard and you see the comet. Or you can also participate to very serious um, scientific investigations such as um, this, the confirmation of uh, exoplanet, which has been discovered by space mission of NASA, or the study of asteroids that could potentially impact our planet, which has been discovered by a survey around, around Earth. So it's like a family of people participating in scientific research uh, in the universe. That's great. So to make it short, Frank, you have a PhD in astrophysics. And after Berkeley, you've been with SETI for the past uh, 10 years. So could you tell us what is SETI and what is your current research uh, at SETI? Yes, so the SETI Institute is a very special place in the, in the field of research. It's a non-profit scientific organization which was founded 35 years ago by famous people like Carl, Carl Sagan and Frank Drake, for instance. Those are iconic names in the field of SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. We have now 120 um, uh, scientists working at the SETI Institute, and each of us are basically participating to the search we are looking for life in our galaxy in the cosmos there is three ways to find life the first one that most people know about is to search for what we call techno signatures so basically we build instruments like large array of antennas that listen to the cosmos cosmos hoping to detect a signal coming from this extraterrestrial civilization another way is to search for life in our own solar system we know that there is water in almost everywhere in our solar system. And water is a key part of uh, in the evolution of life. If you don't have water, we think we will not have life because water is necessary to all the combination of complex molecules. There is more water on Europa, satellite of um, Jupiter, than there is on Earth, for instance. There is a gigantic ocean there underneath the icy surface. There is water on Mars. There is water on trans objects. So we, build, we are building instruments that could one day analyze and detect the presence of life on those planets and those bodies in our solar system. And the third way, which is really the one I, I, I'm involved currently, is to search for life around what we call extrasolar planets, exoplanets. We know that our galaxy is full of stars, and in average, there is two planets around each of those stars. We're talking about 250 billion stars, okay? 
that's a that's a lot a big number it's as many neurons you have in the in the brain of an elephant to give you an idea because i'm sure you know the size of the brain of an elephant so that's a very good indicate an indicator right but there is a lot of stars and there is a lot of planets and very recently we say five years ago we discovered that around each star there is planets and there is a lot of terrestrial planets Terrestrial planets mean planets with a solid surface like ours. So if a planet is located to the right place, not too close, not too far away from its star, it could have liquid water. If we have this planet have liquid water, then maybe there is complex biology happening over there, maybe life, and maybe even intelligence. So we are now developing instruments that could find those exoplanets, analyze the light coming from these exoplanets to measure, to search for instance, the presence of liquid, um, liquid on the surface, ocean, but also the, the presence of the complex chemistry, what we call biomarkers. And from those observations, we will probably one day find the presence of life on one of those exoplanets. So you're based in the Silicon Valley where science meets technology to help research. And can you speak uh, about uh, your collaboration with NASA? Yeah, the SETI Institute is a non-profit organization, so we have a large way of, uh, a broad way of uh, funding of our research. We have donations, we have uh, participation from private companies, uh, but we also have a significant part of our funding coming from, from NASA, the American Space Agency. So NASA is funding uh, our research directly. Um, some of our researchers get what we call grants to get this, uh, to get this research funded. But SETI is also located in a very interesting uh, place of this planet. Uh, we are embedded in the middle of the Silicon Valley, as you mentioned. And in this, around us, we have basically the large co corporation that you know about, Facebook, uh, Google, IBM, Intel, they are all there. So we discover that we have with something to bring to them and they have something to bring to us. They have the knowledge uh, in technology. Like one example that we developed for, we started five, five years ago is what is basically related to machine learning. This new technology has been uh, adopted very quickly by those companies. Those companies have been developing algorithm, network, special computer for that. So, but in astronomy, we did not use them, especially at NASA. They were not very used by, those, by, the, by the, the Space Center. So SETI created what we call the Frontier Development Lab, which is a, an incubator, basically. It's a, it's a program that we run every year for, which, uh, for 10 weeks, and we pair two uh, computer scientists and two, ast two uh, astronomers or scientists related to the field which could be heliophysics, astronomy, and uh, uh, Earth's planetary defense and Earth studies, for instance. And those work together with the su financial support and also the support of uh, engineers from those large corporations I mentioned to you. And they try to solve the problem by use, uh, using machine learning algorithm and technology. So example we have this year, we have a team which is basically trying to develop an algorithm that could detect uh, fire in forest very quickly using machine learning and data coming from, um, from Earth satellite. Uh, we have another team which has been working in the past on the, how to uh, predict the behavior of our sun, because the sun is a very, is very agitated and sometimes he has this kind of outburst. And they're extremely annoying for people who, are, who manage satellites because of those outbursts, they could fry some of these very sensitive instruments. So we have been uh, helping developing an algorithm that could predict those outbursts in advance and the duration using machine learning and using all the data could taken by this constellation of satellites of NASA. So at SETI Institute, we are really trying to to bridge the gap between science and technology by putting together those people who generally don't talk to each other and finding solution from this brainstorming. And the Frontier Development Lab is truly this. It's an international partnership 
and we expanded it now to the Canadian Space Agency, the Luxembourg Space Agency, and we hope soon to have other partners uh, such as the Australian Space Agency and maybe as well the French Space Agency. That's really fascinating. It's, it's great uh, to see uh, uh, the immensity of, of research and what, what you're all doing. So now a big and very important question, Frank. Listen to me. Do you believe in extraterrestrial life? I think yes, you answer the question, please. Go beyond that, explain. Yeah, of course I do believe that somewhere in our galaxy there is elsewhere life. Uh, if I was not believing this, I would not be working at SETI. I think that should be kind of mandatory when you work at SETI. But the, this is a belief, and I'm a scientist, and the belief is not enough. You need to basically have kind of a proof, or at least have a concept behind it. So my concept is not coming from me, it's coming from Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan always uh, said, uh, the universe is pretty big. If we were just, if there was just us, that would be a waste of of space. And when Carl Sagan said that, it was just based on the size of our galaxy and the number of galaxies in our universe, which are, we know that there is like three trillion galaxies in our universe. How many galaxies that there is trees on Earth? So there is a lot of places. And now we know that there is also a lot of terrestrial planets on, in orbit around those stars. So the likeliness of us being alone it's very small because there's so many worlds that there will be at least one world that will look like ours because there's so many of them and they repeat and the combination of water presence of water presence of the planet may happen again somewhere else so i do believe that there is life elsewhere intelligent life that's something that i think it's still developable because we don't really know what is intelligence uh, people claim that human species is the only intelligent species on Earth, but a lot of uh, scientists now, biologists, are noticing that other species are intelligent. Uh, chimpanzees can use, can do very basic math, but they can do math. Uh, elephants as well. Whales are intelligent, they have a social life, they meet, they gather, they separate, and so on. So they are intelligent, they have simply a different intelligence than us. We are what we call a technolo technological intelligence. That's why we're building everything around us. If we were like whales, we would basically be living on the surface of this planet without changing much of, of it. We have a different type of intelligence. So now my question, and that's a very big question, is, is that is in technological intelligence something that we will see elsewhere? Or are we, are we an anomaly in this universe? And I have an answer to that, and I think that's what we're gonna to try to answer by observing those exoplanets. Because if one day we observe those exoplanets we find life, maybe we're gonna find a type of intelligence there, some signatures of a city, for instance. And that will be the answer that technological intelligence is something that exists elsewhere in our galaxy. Wow, <laughs> that was an answer. Thank you for that, really. So in fact, you had what everybody could dream of one day as a birthday present. Um, Asteroid 6639 was named after you. It's called Marshes uh, because you discovered um, the first triple asteroid system in 2007. So Frank, now what else could you dream of finally? Well, I already inferred what I was dreaming of. In fact, I already mentioned it. Um, my career has been about developing adaptive optics, which is a technology that allow us to observe those moons around asteroids. Now, adaptive optics, I can basically simplify this by saying it's, an, it's, a techno, it's, um, it's a technology that allows us to get an image like if you telescope when in space. So we're getting rid of the effect of the blurring due to the atmosphere above our, our telescopes from the ground. So from the ground, we're building bigger and bigger telescopes. We, we are putting better and better adaptive optic systems. So one day, and pretty soon in fact, I think, we will be able to image those exoplanets that I mentioned previously. To image an exoplanet is basically to collect photons coming from this exoplanet, so seeing the exoplanet. In science, when you see something, 
yours, you can spread the light of what you see, like a rainbow, and you will be able to analyze the light and see the temperature of the planet, see if there is a presence of complex molecules on the planet, like presence of gases, which are indicative of life, the biomarkers, for instance. You can also see some variation because the planet will rotate far away. You will not see the rotation, but you will be able to measure this rotation. That's what we call a light curve. And by combining those information one day, we will be able to, to, to know if one exoplanet is identical to ours or kind of it has this kind of life that we have seen on our planet, have the same kind of biomarkers. And this is what we call the pale blue uh, dot. That's the way we call our own planet, a pale blue dot, because from far away our planet will look blue because of the ocean. So what I want is to give to the next generation of astronomer, but also the next generation that's the, a, 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 an image of another pale blue dot in orbit around another star. And that will be, I think, a radical image because that's an image will be suddenly show that life exists elsewhere in our galaxy. Hopefully it will be close to us, not too far away from us, like 100 light years away, for instance. And that will give us an, um, that will tell us we are not alone. And we are not alone is important because if, for, if we know that we are not alone, we know we're not an anomaly in this, in this uh, universe. It means also that we may have a future because this civilization may be more advanced than us because it's, more, it's older. So this is the kind of dream I have, to give the image of another pale blue dot and hopefully detect the presence of intelligence on this pale blue dot. And that will give us a direction, a place to explore. Human always been explorers. And that will be basically another, another place to go, to see, to visit. Wow, this is incredible. Thank you so much, Frank, for sharing all this with us. And I, I hope that the next interview will be called um, The Dream of Frank, Frank Marshes Come True, you know. So, but hopefully we'll have you before that. <laughs> Thank you, Florence. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, Frank. Bye.